okay there you go yeah that'll do that's the point that's that's that gets the point across so this song i've been listening to it doing it listen to it for weeks and um i thought i'd actually open this tutorial with me just bashing a bit of it out and doing a rough job of all of it including the solo i will teach it to you a little bit more accurately than that i did put myself under a little bit of pressure there um so this is a great tune it's a challenging tune um i would probably deem it to be country billy um, and by the way, I think if you really like this tune, you'll definitely like the vaudeville and stuff, which you might be familiar with, but that's my, uh, original sort of rock, really psychobilly band. Um, and then my Death Rides a Harley album. When I, like, I heard this song years ago, and then, again, Panu, who's, uh, talked to quite a bit, he's one of my Patreon members, um, and, a uh, great musician himself from a band called The Graveyard Bashers. Uh, he raised this song, and I just went, oh man, gotta do this one. So, um... Yeah, as soon as I heard it, totally connected with it again, and um, yeah, sat down and learned it, and it was it's very challenging. So, uh, just quickly, the Patreon, I, I'm going to mention it every time, because obviously it's really important um, that I mention it, so people check it out and consider signing up and having a look. There's heaps of transcriptions, uh, just, there'll be a Folsom Prison arrangement, uh, has just, will just have gone up before this one. Um, there's heaps of other psychobilly songs. Uh, one of the first ones I did was a Tiger Army one, and, and of course, Gargoyles over Copenhagen. So if you like Peter Sandoff's work, there's more of it on there as well. Um, anyway, moving right along, let me move the camera so I can start walking you through this lesson. And um, yeah, I hope you enjoy. Please like, please comment, all helps. Uh, yeah, see you in the lesson. Okay, so the intro, again, thanks to Panu for sending me a little bit of footage from a live stream where I was able to look at Peter's hands. Um, I was initially playing it. But I noticed Peter Sandoff in, with this good, useful footage um, actually is sort of holding this kind of a structure. So um, now the very, very intro is not, not too difficult. It's the three on the sixth string, then the three on the fifth string, then the second fret and the first fret. So uh, palm muting slightly, I'd probably start with an up into a down, ba -dum, ba -dum, ba -dum, like that. Now we've got this thing, and this is, it's challenging. So we hit those, we hit the four, and I'm using my second finger, and then we hit the third fret there, on the fifth string, so boom, boom. Then, slide that second fret into the third again, and keep that kind of ready to go. Then we hit the fourth fret on the sixth, and then we put our pinky on the sixth fret of the fifth string. So. Now, this is where it gets really hard. We pick the sixth string again. We pick the fifth string again while we're holding that. And then we pull off to the three there. But believe it or not, as we pick, as we do that pull off, we actually pick that sixth string again. Yeah, I know. Pull off, pick the sixth string. Then pick the fifth string again with the pinky back, then hit that fourth string like that, okay? No, Adobe, I don't want to update. I need to see the tab, please. Thank you. Okay, so. That's what's going on there. I'll do it really slow for you. That's right. So as you pull off, you pick the sixth string, pick the fifth string again with the pinky down and you hit that sixth string okay so that's the very very first part now it, again it would help you if you had the guitar tab for this go on my patreon um, for five dollars a month you have access to everything on that page um, including this so well worth checking out oh uh, sorry he keeps it there yeah Part, we're putting our first finger on the third fret and we're bowing across the two threes there. Nice and easy. So sixth string, fifth string. Slide back again. So really we're sort of doing that, but if you keep your finger across, you get a little bit of extra notes going on there on the lower string, which sounds good. So slide two to three, up to the third fret on the fifth string, then hit the sixth string again. 
and then you put your pinky down on the six and just like before it's exactly the same thing but we we now have the first finger bar across those two so i'll walk you through that just a little slower so we've got boom Two on the screen, let's show it so. Two to three on the fifth string, hit the sixth string, hit the sixth fret on the fifth string, play the sixth string, play the fifth string, pull off, pick the sixth string as you pull off, okay, it's on the three, and then play that six again, and then play that three on the sixth string again. So as I pulled off, then I knocked a bunch of strings, you don't want to do that. And then we're playing the first fret and on the sixth string and then the third fret on the fifth string. So there's boom, boom. And then we hammer from the one to the three on the fifth string. And we hit the sixth string again, which we're still holding that one. And we're barring now to get that one there. So that passage there from the, from the F bass chord. the sixth string and then we play the third fret on the fifth string and we pull off as we pick the sixth string and then play the third fret again pull off again then open and then we've got this passage here So from the F, so we're picking 6th, 5th, hammer, pick the 6th string, pick up on the 4th, which we're barring to get the 1st fret, hit the 6th string, hit the 5th string, hit the 6th string, but do the pull-off, alright, and then pick the 5th string, pull-off, you're probably going to get that open anyway, into that bit, okay? Three, five, three, four, three, three, six on the fifth string, three on the fourth again. So when I was saying three, five, we're, we're sort of going back to this third fret on the fifth string. And then we play the three, and then we just do this passage. Five, four, three, six on the fifth string, back to the third on the fourth string. And play that third fret there. And... Um, it's obviously quite quick. So make sure you're practicing all this with alternating picking. That will help a lot. Okay, so that first bit repeats after that. But only the very beginning of it before it gets into another really complex part. This is a very tricky little tune. Um, uh, you, if you've seen any of my, my other videos, there's all these finger picking things and jazz arrangements and all crazy stuff. But the way he plays this tune is something... Um, extremely awkward about playing it, but it doesn't it doesn't sound at all awkward. And I'm not saying that he's an awkward guitar player; he's a brilliant guitar player. It's just really hard to play. It's really difficult. He obviously knew what he wanted to achieve, and you know, did what he had to do to, to make it make that sound work, which is just admirable. He's I think he's probably one of the best cyclically guitar players out there, frankly. So, and then the bit here that I was just about to talk about. So we're going. So what we do, exactly the same as before, slide up to the three, go to the six, oh god, sorry, go to the six, hit the sixth, uh, the sixth fret there, hit the, si uh, the sixth string, the fourth fret, hit the fifth string, hit the sixth string, hit the fifth string, and slide up to the eighth fret, okay? And it's on the upbeat of the four, which makes it really challenging, so we've got this... So we do that, then we jump back to the first fret and we play like an F5 power chord, 
So you hit the sixth string, you hit the fifth string. Then you hammer from the first fret to the third fret. Hit the sixth string again, you're still holding the first fret. Then put your pinky on the third fret of the fourth string. And then we're hitting the, yeah, the fourth string and then we're hitting the fifth string. And just, it's essentially just a basic power chord, but there's nothing basic about what he's playing here. And then he sort of alternates that, so. I almost wish I could teach you all face to face on this particular lesson so you could say, um, you could ask questions at this point because it's just so finicky and I understand that it's a little bit difficult to follow along because it's quite intricate, but. Okay, so my advice is that little bit that I just played there, listen to it a couple of times. See if you can get that in your head, because that will help a lot. Then from here, after you've finished that passage, the he does a little pull off there, and then he slides up to that three. So, okay, we get up to the three. We're playing, you just play that three, now you hit the six, then you play the three, and then on the sixth string, and then the sixth fret on the fifth. And then you sort of alternate those for a little bit. So we're going. So we've got. Then we go back to the fifth fret there. Then you keep hitting that sixth string there with the third fret. So. Then it flattens to get the three. Then you go back to the two. And then he doesn't play anything on the sixth string there. There's just a little pause. to be honest, when I was playing that before. Uh, so again. So you do that, then you sort of miss a note, then you hit the three there on the fifth string, and then you hit the third fret on the sixth string, fifth fret on the fifth, third on the sixth, sixth on the fifth, third on the sixth, and oh, one more on the sixth, and rock pull it off to the pull it off to the fifth fret as you hit the sixth string. So it's a really complex passage, so many subtle, subtle nuances, it's difficult. So that's what I'm talking about there, you wanna hit that. You wanna pull that finger off as you hit the three the last time, and then you slide there. Okay, one more time. Thank God that's over because that's actually very, very challenging. Um, yeah, I hope that's a useful resource. Sometimes it's really challenging to work out how you guys want these videos because I could just play it once and talk through every little bit once and then you could skip back and forth through the video. But I like to kind of keep going over that bit and make sure that I'm explaining the various facets of it. So give me some feedback if, if what you think of that. If you're happy with that, great, let me know. If not, also let me know, no problem. So we'll work something different for the next one. So uh, if not scarred from this particular one, and never come back. So the verse now, this stuff's not too hard now. These are chords, okay? So basic chords, or not basic chords, but foundational kind of chords. So we've got, we've got an A flat chord, okay? So that's like, imagine a power chord, four, six, six, second finger on the fifth fret on the third, and we want to bar right across to get those. So that looks like this. And by the way, that's an A flat, an E flat, an A flat, a C, which is the third note of the chord, makes it a major chord of an, an A flat major, and then E flat and A flat again. So Rhyth rhythm wise here, um, the first, there's a, an acoustic guitar going just like that. And then later he does a, a more Johnny Cash type, but we'll cover that after. So you've got the A flat chord. And if you just want to play a nice simple rhythm, you kind of just want to go down, down, up, down, down, up, down but maybe restrict your first strike. 
Okay, so it's the A flat chord. We do two bars of that, we go to an E flat chord, six fret, eight, eight, eight. Okay, I play it like that. I think of an A chord, play it like that, bar across. Four. I love the sound of the alternating note. I think it's well worth getting that in there and me explaining that to you. We hit the fifth string, strum from the fourth down, bring it across, hit the sixth string, and strum again from the fourth. So, you can just leave that there might need to drop the palm to cut it off, or else it will sound like this. Yeah, I prefer. Yeah, but it just depends on your taste. You can muck around with that. Um, from here, that's the E, the e flat chord, so E flat, B flat, E flat, G. That's the third, that's what makes it a major chord. That, was, that would make it a minor chord if we played it as a flat third. E flat major. And of course, you get this little guy up here if you're barring across. You could probably live without it if you're not nailing that though, so. Now a G chord. Same as the A flat chord, but one fret back. And then a C minor chord, so we've got the third fret, fifth fret, fifth fret, fourth fret. Third fret, okay, starting on the fifth string. Five, sorry, uh, three, five, five, four, three. Okay, again, check out the tab. It makes it so much easier. It makes it easier for me too because you, 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 I'm getting I'm kind of getting paid more directly for my time, which is great. But also, I can live without it. So appreciate it if you can go out and check it out. Just support the channel. Um, otherwise, enjoy. Um, so that's the. We're up to the C minor. And, the, and that all just repeats, okay? So it's... You can also play that E flat with a flat bar like that, okay? G. You can use a G like that if you want. I don't really like it though in this context. I think it doesn't suit as well. So that loops uh, a couple of times. And then you got the, the... I guess it's kind of like the chorus. Okay, so the F chord. Again, same type of chord as the A flat, but now we're doing it from the first fret. C minor. Now you got E flat again. And you just slide that E flat up to the 10th fret. And that's your G chord. And then we're back to the C minor. F. E flat, but here he does this. So he picks the fifth string, fourth, up on the second, up on the third, down on the fourth. So you slide in a little if you got the ability to do that. Maybe pick the note and slide that finger up, then do the rest of picking. So double check the detail I got down on that when I transcribed it yeah that's correct okay cool so okay so that all repeats other than the intro all those chords repeat and then it comes back to that intro so we play through that whole section again uh, and it even comes off with the There. So if you're playing that C minor chord, you might want to stay there and roll that first across and then drop back or back here. Hopefully you, but good for you to see it because you were probably working on it before. A little refresher. Now we're into the guitar solo. So this is the bit probably all been looking forward to. And strangely, it's probably going to be a little easier to teach than that intro because it was easy to work out. Um, but definitely sounds more complicated. So at this point here, uh, we've got Peter Sandoff at his best. Um, there's a lot of little nods here to, uh, I would say, Cliff Gallup. Um, that real rockabilly style, really early rockabilly stuff. Um, but in brilliant Peter Sandor fashion, it's not over your typical four chord blues, which is what makes it really interesting 
Now I think for this one, uh, I'm going to do a, a more in-depth analysis in a theory sense for my Patreons only, okay? So that'll be for the uh, $5 tier members. Um, but nonetheless, I'm going to walk you through the entire solo right now. Uh, but yeah, just more of an in-depth analysis uh, for my Patreons. I've, I've got to start rewarding those guys because they're all looking after me. Um, but of course, yeah, I hope I hope you can appreciate this. And of course, if questions are asked on my YouTube channel, I'll, I'm happy to answer them too. So... The solo at this point goes, uh, so the first two bars. So that's, no, we're not gonna get too much into the theory, but you can see that it's based around an A flat chord there, okay? So I'm gonna get more into that stuff and that's gonna be real useful if you're getting into this style to have access to that. Now, uh, so we're going four to five, we're barring across, and we're getting that fourth fret there. So, so we pick down on the third, up on the first string, and then we play the second string, which we're barring, hammer to the sixth, up on the first again, and then we repeat that first lick. And then the second one. But you just keep now repeating that second lick. So. that twice then you hit the four now this time you land on that six you start bending um, like that okay so so one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one so we want this note the pinky goes on the sixth fret of the first string and then we do a little bit of hybrid picking here. Like that. Then we pick this again. Then we pick it again and let down. So. Actually, you can hybrid pick from the start if you like. I have a video on hybrid picking. You can check that out with the tabs available on my Patreon. Okay, so that's the first line of the solo, right there. That's everything uh, up to the next point. So, see how I double pick at the end of that bar? Let it down, straight, pick that note, pick the six, then hammer, four to six, pull off, play the five, then this part, you hammer, Okay, I didn't put that in the tab, I just noticed. Apologies, but that's a hammer on pull off. Then we play that, so that's on the four to five. Play the five on the on the fourth string, we were on the third. Okay, five on the fourth string, third on the fourth string. Play a G chord, absolutely brilliant. Uh, after you strum that chunk of the G chord, six, five, four, three, okay. Up on the second, then get your hand out of the way because we need the third string open. We play the fourth fret on the second string, third string open again, six, third string open again, four, then we grab the third fret, slide up to the eight, strum right across, we bar, then we go up. So let me play that. I've walked you through that. You can cycle back and have a look. I'm just going to now play it for you at a medium, or a nice slow tempo from the... And we're into the next line. So I might just give you a few pointers on that because it's, it's not super easy. Let me play the whole thing. That's everything from bar 75 to bar 
83. That's right, there's 83 bars of transcripted music there at this point. So, um, just shows you there's a lot of time gone into working this one out. Um, now, what I wanted to talk about quickly there was some of the right, the, the, the up-down stuff we're doing or some of the right-hand technique here. I guess the hybrid picking is a bit more self-explanatory, but when we get to the bit that goes down, up, I like to go down, up, then we've sort of come down because the one occurs without us playing anything, right? So we're going four and one and two and three and four and one, right? But we're not playing anything there. So it's sort of a one. And then we go down, down, up like that, okay? So we're going on the, up that slide, two, three and four is nothing up is with the 11 the pinky down the 11 down is nothing we relax the left hand to get that little bit of muted sound go to the third finger up again bring the hand down relax the finger up again then we pick down and we're, we've got the 11 there don't worry about this string now we're sort of just hitting the 8 and the 11 pull off strum again it's now eight and nine, we're pulling off, okay? So all of those notes there, we're on the 11, on the 10, still holding all the eights at the back there, up on the, uh, sorry, I'm. Then, yeah, up on the eight, we're back on the eight, down on the 11, pull off, down on the nine, pull off, bring the nine back and add the, Oh, yeah, just bring the nine back and make sure you add that first string to get that chord there. So, and that there is the top part of an A flat chord. So, with D, E, F, G, A flat. Okay. Um, so, then this next part of, again, very similar kind of things I want to talk about with the correct rhythm playing. And the reason we want to do that is that way we get that no brainer for the right hand once you've programmed in that rhythm and it will make you a better rhythm player will make the rhythm of your whole lead playing um, better. So, where were we? So from here, one, two, and three, and four, and and, two, and four. I counted that wrong, but the rhythm was right. So one. Okay, so here, the very last note, you can kind of choose what you do there. I've put an eight, then he slides up to the 11. Um, so, but you might, I'm not sure. He, he He's obviously striking as he's sliding up, but I needed to put something. So what, what I'm talking about is let me just play it for you and then it will we'll probably make a little bit more sense. But... Damn it. See how tricky this stuff is? So we're going. Yeah, let me walk you through that actually. So we're going down, 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 up, up on the 11. So we're, we're add, I added the 10, we're adding the 11. We're, we're um, up, swing down, up on the 10 again, come down, lift up the third finger and you've got the eight revealed there. Then we come down on the 10, returning, pull off. Now pick that note and slide up to the double 11 here. It's a double stop. And this is classic Cliff Gallop, this lick. So it's hard to play this out of context sometimes. So I'll go from that A flat again. Yeah, so he slides into the 11. You got down, up, down. Bring that first finger up. Uh, so that down was on the 13 there, on the second. Then we're playing the 11, the 12, hammer that on. Then we're going to the 11 on the second string, 13 on the second string. And then we're doing the double stop again. 
down, up, and then bend to 13. Bring it back, go to the 11. Oh, this is all on the first string. And then finish there on the 13 on the second string. So that bit. So that last little play through there, that's the most important one. You need to listen to that and get it into your head. Let's play the whole lot. This whole this whole line. So this is again. This is from bar eighty three. Brilliant Cliff Gallop style, in a very interesting context with these really spooky kind of chord progressions that he puts together. So that finishes off nice and cleanly, and then we get this lick here, which is slide into the twelve and the twelve. You really got to slide in, um, but where you slide in from completely up to you. If you don't alternate pick that, you're gonna have a hard time with it. So we're sliding into the 12 and the 12. This is now at bar 87, bar 87. Sorry, I couldn't see it on the computer because the notes start to cross over it. So we slide into the 12, we pick up on the second string, down on the second string, up on the 12 on the third string, add the 13 on the second string, go back to the third string, hold that same 12th fret, add the pinky, Play the third string. Uh, I've lost my place basically, so. 13, 12, 15, 12. Then you're doing this little 13, 12, 12 on the third. 13, 12 on the second, 12 on the third. Then you sort of do a little slide in again, and you're playing this G, C, and G again. So it's 12th fret, 13th fret, and 15th fret. So this this last little passage here, we got. Down, up, 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 down, up, but miss the strings. Down, up. We've got one fret and you've got 13, 13, and 16. That's another way to play an A flat chord. You've got an A flat, a C and an A flat. Okay, and that's that's the end of the solo. So I'll play through that solo very very slowly. Um, what I might do, yeah, I might have to actually because the, the way the screen is, it's split right down the middle, which is very frustrating. But so we've got. see the second half of that solo but I decided to plow on through and a calm came over me and I seemed to remember every little detail which is really cool. So when I transcribe these tunes you know I spend a lot of time transcribing them bar by bar. Putting the whole thing together can actually take a lot of time to also work on and learn um, and that can, can be a whole separate challenge in itself but my goal is to actually break these songs down and give them to you to learn. Maybe you can go away and show me a cover. I'd love to see if any of you guys do a cover that would be fantastic. So that is uh, the solo which is the most challenging well, yeah, it's probably the most significant part of the song as a guitar player, I think. Um, and the intro is obviously a big one too. Now, the final verse has some really cool stuff going on. Um, so that there, uh, when we get to this point, he starts singing. And he does these really nice little things like this. So it goes one, two, three, four. Okay, so he's just picked the notes out of the chord. And then he plays an E-flat chord up in the same register. So that's 15, 16, 15, 15, 16, 15, okay? So that's like a D chord, but up one. 
So he plays that, and then, uh, so we go one, two, three, four, one, two, three. And then he picks the first string, and then he picks the third string, like that, and slides back. And then he does um, some notes out of a G chord. So we've got... So we're playing the fourth fret, and the three and the three on the first and second string, so... Can we slide up and do the D shape again from the seventh fret? Or, or eighth fret if you want to think of the root note, because this is just a G chord. And then we come up to here and we're playing uh, another version of a G chord, which is 12, 12, and 10. So. And then he plays a 13. So. So that passage from there. So I like to hold that note there, or you could play like this, and let all the notes ring. But keep something ringing if you don't happen to play it like that, so you get a nice sound from it. Um, well, from there, uh, he does these other little things too, actually, so... Does that come in? Let me just explain the context of that. So we've got. Yeah, so at this point here, he, he kind of plays these real subtle little things. Because I was born, because I was born free. So that'd be there. Bom, da, bom, bom, bom. Oh, I overcomplicated that. And he just kind of bashes out on a C5 chord. And I was born free. Okay, I'm not going to get too into detail with that. It's not that difficult, and you can get the tab if you want to look over it. Um, and then the last chorus, he uses the F chord, same as the G chord, but he's up here now. And he does these real cool little, which I used to hear him do, you'd hear him doing necromantics all the time. Yeah, that's really cool. Match. Three. Then he's back to. So, in that last chorus part from, you know, I light a match again, it's the F from here, just like the G chord we did before, but from here, and the A flat chord, same thing, but he's here. That rhythm. Boom. Boom. And then he's back to the C down here. That kind of thing. Um, that's I'm not showing exactly how it goes because I don't think it matters hugely as long as you get the, the feel for it. Make it sound good and then we're back to here. Sorry, it's the bit we just did. I just forgot this chord, so we got... Uh, and then we're back to... chord from here so that's 8 10 10 8 8 8 okay if you've lasted this long through the song you're extremely dedicated you might hate me for rushing through it a little bit at the end there um but i think you'll also understand i've been smashing at that this lesson for 37 minutes now and my brain is starting to wander i hope you really enjoyed that lesson um if you're a peter sandoff fan i hope i'm saying that right just like i am uh you'll appreciate that i think he's one of the most clever smart creative and and perhaps uh in terms of fretboard knowledge you know he's i think he's right up there you know i'd say probably him and jim jim heath are probably in my opinion the two two of the greatest players and then some of those old school guys really knew their stuff as well um the dude from klingons I'm pretty sure has um yeah fair bit of knowledge but i could be wrong i don't know if you're out there and you want to comment that would be really cool. Um, thanks for watching, guys. Uh, again, check out the Patreon. It makes a big difference to me. I'm working real hard over here. Um, check it out. You'll see that. And, uh, yeah, stay tuned. And check out my album, Homemade Space Machine. Lots of cool stuff on there. Thanks for watching. Give me some feedback.
give me some love, some shares, some likes, all those kinds of things. And um, thank you very much. See you later.